talking a little bit today about MIDI to Lightroom plugin uh, and the X-Touch compact board that I've chosen to use with that interface um, to control Lightroom. The uh, MIDI controllers are originally designed for audio applications, uh, allowing you uh, direct control of different options within the interface um, or, or within music apps. So they've been adapted to work with uh, Lightroom's backend, uh, which Adobe programmed but then never really developed anything with. Uh, recently, there has been some developments like MIDI to Lightroom, uh, Pusher Labs, PFixer, which is a similar application to MIDI to Lightroom. Uh, that's a $100 app. MIDI to Lightroom is free. There's some pros and cons to the two. I found that I like MIDI to Lightroom better. Um, I think it interface. I think the interface is faster and more reliable. I had some hang-ups with PFixer where it would get out of sync from time to time. But uh, for some people in some systems, uh, you may prefer uh, PFixer and the boards. They send uh, pre-programmed as opposed to uh, MIDI to Lightroom where you have to program everything yourself. The other option that's pretty popular right now are these palette controls, which are modular, uh, very slick, well-built. Um, they work with more than just Lightroom, but they're a little expensive and they don't offer uh, a whole lot of extra control that you can't get from MIDI to Lightroom. For example, with MIDI to Lightroom, this uh, $60 Korg Nano Control Board, which has eight encoders, eight faders, and 30-some buttons, uh, to get that in palette gear, that level of control would cost you over $1,000, and this Korg board is $60, and MIDI to Lightroom is free, so uh, pretty good value there, and an easy way to test it out. The Korg Nano Control and the X-Touch Mini take up very little desktop space. They're smaller than a keyboard, and they give you quite a bit of control right out of the gates. I opted to go for the X-Touch Compact, which you can see in the lower right screen. This has motorized faders, which I find to be invaluable for this sort of work. Uh, the board does take up a lot of desktop space, but when I'm in Lightroom, I, I'm fairly well configured to where I, this is all I need, along with my mouse, for a few uh, options like dr uh, drawing crops or drawing gradients or occasionally using brush tools. Most of my brush work I do in Photoshop, my touch-ups, uh, skin cleanup, and I'll break out my Wacom tablet for that. But getting into MIDI to Lightroom, the program has uh, its own standalone application that runs alongside of uh, Lightroom. Some of the commands and configuration is in Lightroom under the plugin menu, and the rest of it is in the standalone app. So you simply uh, push a button and MIDI to Lightroom will recognize that you've pushed a button on the controller. Uh, it connects via USB to the computer, very, very simple. And you assign that button to whatever adjustment you want to make, whatever keyboard command you want to send, or whatever um, you can switch from the library module to the develop module to the web module. You can program quite a bit uh, into MIDI to Lightroom. The board that I've chosen has an A layer and a B layer, so it effectively doubles all the controls. So on my A layer, I have my majority of my adjustments that I use for exposure, color, contrast, highlights, shadows, whatnot. And then my B layer is for targeted color adjustments, my HSL sliders, uh, so I can control any of my saturation adjustments on the faders, my luminance adjustments with the top encoders, my hue adjustments with the side encoders. But I primarily work uh, from the A, A panel, and uh, I'm just going to jump in and edit some photos here to show you how quickly uh, this goes. Um, I've programmed a few presets to apply uh, some of the uh, Lightroom presets that I've, I've written. Uh, these are really simple ones. They just change the camera calibration. As a Fuji shooter, the camera provides uh, camera profiles for different film presets. Uh, similar to uh, older Fuji films, Velvia, Astia, Provia, and uh, their Acros black and white. And so I can simply choose those with these uh, buttons that I've set up, uh, Classic Chrome there. They're very subtle, uh, but when you start to edit them, they'll show uh, their flavor just a little bit more. So I'm going to boost the contrast of this image, give it a little bit more color, 
and then I'm going to give it a little bit of a vignette here draw that towards the middle and feather that vignette a little bit and uh, I can zoom in a little so I can see my faces might want to add a little bit more warmth to this image and that's pretty good uh, maybe a little bit of clarity it's a little there we go I like what I'm seeing there then I just move on to the next image very simple bring the blacks down give it a little bit more uh, saturation Again, a little vignette. I like to use vignettes. You know, paste my settings for my last image, which uh, didn't really work all that well, but can very quickly move from one to the next. Switch to a different film style here. I probably uh, darken this up, but I'll do that in Photoshop. Just clip right along through the images and uh, make the adjustments that I need. Uh, I find that uh, using a mouse on all these sliders over here is incredibly tedious and slow. And this gives me a lot finer tuned controls. A lot easier than using my mouse on those sliders. This image needs some warmth and some color. And I'm going to hit a button, draw a gradient here. Just want to darken the side a little bit. Adjust that gradient, bring it over a little bit. There we go. That's not so distracting there. A little bit more warmth. Yeah. Okay. So you get the idea and it's all about how you set up your interface and how you want to edit and what controls you need to take advantage of. It's very customizable and uh, again with the uh, the sixty and fifty dollar boards that I showed uh, you can get started and test it out and see if you like it. The board I'm using uh, about four hundred dollars but uh, compared to the palette controls uh, I've got about uh, three or four times the amount of buttons as the five hundred dollar uh, palette set and my faders are motorized and I have a page A and a page B and quite a bit more customization as to what I do in these uh, editing setup. So if you have any questions feel free to get at me on Facebook. You guys have a great day. Thank you.